Well, the Respect MP, George Galloway, is with me tonight. Hello, George. Hello there. Are, are you surprised? Well, as uh, Oscar Wilde said on the death scene in Little Nell, you'd have to have a heart of stone not to laugh. The idea that these allies, these NATO allies, are all, according to Frank Gardner and according to the former Communist Miners Union official Kim Howells, though you wouldn't have known it from listening to his interview, uh, everyone's spying on each other. Uh, some friendship, some alliance. Uh, I'm more concerned uh, with the uh, revelation that came out at the same time that, for example, and it's only an example, 70 million French people's telephone calls were tapped in one single month by the National Security Agency of the United States, a foreign country. And here's a tip. It'll not be long before it's revealed that Britain is up to its neck in exactly the same kind of spying on foreign leaders, including our friends and allies, and on foreign citizens. Well, there's no evidence of that. Why do you say that? Uh, because I have on the grapevine herd that it's inconceivable that GCHQ, which has been doing most of the heavy lifting in this vast hoover that uh, Edward Snowden has brought to our attention, most of that heavy lifting because of our geographical position uh, between the United States landmass and the European landmass on as the, the cables come ashore, uh, and across our territory, we've been doing most of the heavy lifting. So it's just a tip, Stephen. I don't have any proof, but I'm telling you here now, and you've heard it here first, Britain's been doing it too. That's my tip. Um, do you blame them in, in, in this world, uh, George? I, I, I know that the PC thing to say is, isn't it outrageous and aren't we surprised? But do you really blame the United States for trying to stay a step ahead? Well, a step ahead of what? Of its own friends and allies? Uh, would we be uh, trying to stay a step ahead of our own family members? Uh, would we pick the pockets of our brothers so that we could well, stay a step ahead? Well, but hold I on mean, a second. What do, these, what do these alliances actually well, mean well, in these well, circumstances? Well, these alliances, of course, are counter-terrorism alliances, but in terms of the economy and commerce... Uh, we're, we're, we're enemies. We're all, enemies. We're all competing but, against each other. But, uh, but competitors don't steal from each other, Stephen. What kind of uh, morality is that? I hope there's no young people listening. The idea <laughs> that you can that you can steal an economic advantage by stealing someone else's property is surely abhorrent. You're a God-fearing man. I, I'm surprised you even put that question. The front page of The Guardian tomorrow, it's uh, along the lines of what you've been saying. The headline, uh, GCHQ fears challenge over mass spying. Uh, the UK intelligence agency, GCHQ, has repeatedly warned it fears a damaging public debate on the scale of its activities because it could lead to legal challenges against its mass surveillance programmes, classified internal documents reveal. That's the front page of The Guardian tomorrow. Well, there you are. I'm a soothsayer. Uh, I didn't know that, Stephen, but uh, it yeah. didn't, you didn't need to be a rocket scientist to work it out that that was coming uh, down the track. I mean, spying on terrorists or people suspected of terrorism or spying on crime is one thing. And of course, we're grateful to the security services in so far as they do that. But you cannot allow uh, foreign governments to spy on our companies or our government to spy on other companies steal their inter intellectual property uh, because that's just theft that's law breaking on an international level uh, from states that are never done telling us that they are the free and democratic world now what real leverage be behind beyond the rhetoric would tiny germany have with america i think the main problem for angela merkel is the outrage amongst german citizens I think it makes the political position of Merkel, as it has done in France with Hollande, under a lot of pressure to prove that they're not American lapdogs and that they're not going to take this lying down. Now, Britain's government, uh, of course, has, over the last 20 years, been playing the lapdog uh, very convincingly. Uh, and uh, our problem is that we'll be next in the firing line, if I'm any judge, and if the Guardian front page is correct. And it's bottomless, the amount of legal... I mean, I took a lot of money off Rupert Murdoch for hacking my phone, Stephen, as did many other people. 
Uh, can you imagine if you're one of the 70 million French men and women who's been being tapped by a foreign government? There's no defence to that in any French well, court. What, what do you think will happen here? That That's really my question. There, there's going to be uh, a, a public relations exercise to put this to bed, to get it behind them. Well, yeah, but uh, the law is the law, and it grinds slow but exceedingly fine. And if I thought that the US government had tap my phone, he said, with a laugh in his voice, uh, I'd be seeking to go to court to establish that. And if, uh, I, if I could, I'd be seeking compensation. And I expect there will be a very long line of people seeking exactly that. It'll be a bit like the banks and the mis-selling of, of uh, insurance and so on. It'll cost billions and it'll go on for years. It's just some news coming into us, obviously, in an unrelated matter tonight. Ray Terrett, uh, the former chauffeur and flatmate of Jimmy Savile. I'm just saying now, he has tonight been charged with a string of historic sex offences involving 15 teenage girls. This news coming into us from uh, Manchester, Greater Manchester Police uh, tonight. Stay with us, George, if you can. Michael Schur is a retired senior CIA officer and professor of security studies at Georgetown University. Hello, Michael. Hello, sir. Should your government be ashamed of this, of what they've done? I think what we should all be ashamed of is we're trying to be adolescents and children in the in the response to it. Uh, your guest says uh, that everybody is spying on everybody, and I think that's exactly right. I think the outrage would have been appropriate during the Cold War, but today it's it's more or less standard operating procedure, and especially under our current president, who is the the most lawless American president since Nixon, and uh, he's going to do pretty much whatever he wants abroad. He certainly does at home. So I, I think there's a lot of hypocrisy flying around in the air, and it's uh, well, it's got to be ta- just, it's got to be it's taken comical. it's got to be taken seriously, Michael. And it is not comical if if millions of people have had their phones hacked, tapped, spied upon. That is not comical. Well, yes, it's comical. You're, you're, it's your continent liked Obama better than than we did, and now you've got what you wanted an inexperienced, lawless man who is collecting intelligence around the world wherever he wants to. Uh, it, it is hysterical that we put this incompetent, uh, lawless person in charge of 300 million Americans. But that said, the one thing that uh, we need to have from Western leaders is a little honesty about what's going on here. The problem of terrorism is, is uh, ge- ge- geometrically larger than it was in 2001. If you simply look at a, a, a political map of the world and see the expansion of Islamist uh, militancy, terrorism, insurgency, whatever you want to call it, sir, the problem is growing greatly. And, and Mr. Cameron and Mr. Hollande and Mr. Obama and Mr. Bush have all told the world that we're winning when we're obviously losing. And what they're trying to do desperately is to try to make sure they preempt whatever's coming next from the enemy. When we choose, as a Western civilization, not to use our military and win wars, when we decide quite um, calmly, really, to lose to the enemy in Afghanistan and give the, give that place back to the people who were running it at, uh, in 2001, what you have left it to run uh, with to protect yourselves is the intelligence community. But, but George, and it's ge- never enough. But that's what they're doing. George Galloway, explain to me what America would have to gain from listening to Angela Merkel. What, what would they well, want uh, to hear? Uh, or hope they hear. I, I, I don't want to be rude, but it, it would. It must be a very boring gig to be told that you've got to listen in on Angela Merkel. But the truth is, they want to know in advance what the German government's attitude is to this or that international issue, whether whether it's economic or political or even uh, military. And uh, the German government's uh, affairs are a matter only for the German people. Uh, President Barack Obama has no right to order American intelligence operatives, and he is responsible, I agree, at least on that point with your guest. He has absolutely no right to order American personnel to uh, hack our telephones. And if we find out, as we have, thanks to Edward Snowden, that they did, well, they'll be in trouble. Now, your friend said it was comical and even hysterical, but I don't hear the sound of many people laughing uh, on this side of the Atlantic or on the other. The American people are just as outraged 
at the vast harvesting of their personal, private, even secret information as the people on this are they side Michael? of the Atlantic are. Are they, oh, Michael? I think they are, but it doesn't matter because we're run by a monarch, not by a, by a, a president anymore. Uh, the whole, the collection against 300 million Americans, of course, violates, it trashes the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. But there's, how, when was the last time you saw a mention of that in the American media? The American media continues to have their love affair with this uh, reckless, um, uh, uh, lawless man. And I think it is, from, from an adult perspective, uh, just, it is hysterical. That, you know, as your, as your guest said, the French have been stealing information from us forever, and we've known about it. The Israelis do the same thing to us. The world is not a moral place, sir. I wish it was. I believe that it should be, but it's not. Okay. And those people who are complaining about what we're doing are either, uh, to quote a friend of mine, are either doing it themselves or if they had the capacity to do it, they would do it. Okay, Michael Shearer, thank you very much. George, always nice to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Stephen. 25 past 10, 0500 909 693. If you're picking up the phone tonight, official GDP figures 